Lord order ni mtazamo mpya dunia inaingia katika mtazamo mpya mtazamo huu mpya ni wa dunia kuunganishwa kuwa moja yule mnyama alikuwa na meno ya chuma yenye kuvunja vunja meno yale yalikuwa yanavunja nini yalikuwa yanavunja uwezo wa kila taifa duniani kujitawa kujitawala kwa pamoja kwa hivyo unapofanyiwa biometric registration data yako ikichukuliwa wewe ni sawa mia kwa mia umekuwa registered kwa Illuminati you are a member hasa wakamregist kwa hiyo nini yao sasa hasa alipokuwa registered sasa hasa ndo kabla apewele card akapigwa stamp kwa mkono hasa alipopigwa ile stamp ikatoka sita 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 you are underground watoto mashuleni tumewanasa wengi aso watoto wa kisichana wanapewa card na card zimepeanwa mashule na watoto vile wanatuambia wanatuambia wale wanaowapatia hizi card wanawaambia waende wanaweza fanya shopping for free anapanda magari free akitumia ile card anaenda matibabu free school fees free na anaambiwa hii gadi uhakikishe umeficha isionekane hata na mzazi kwa hiyo zile ambazo tumenasa ni kwa sababu Mungu ametaka zinaswe na kadi zingine wanatuchukuanga za hospitali this is of Saudia what you've got fire in your eyes nothing hides from you you see everything even the deepest secret of men expose every evil consume every wickedness you are the all consuming fire
this is Marietta, a confident and vibrant young woman. Her environment does not offer the opportunity and infrastructure to easily succeed, but she does what she can to enjoy life and control her own destiny. Today, Marietta is visited by a community health worker. She's excited because she suspects that she may be pregnant. The health worker provides a pregnancy test, and the results are positive. Marietta will be having a child. To assist and accompany her throughout the pregnancy, she is offered a package of personalized services and products, some of which are discounted, while others are completely free. She can easily subscribe by sending a free SMS. The moment Marietta validates the subscription, she receives a set of vouchers for folic acid and vitamins, important supplements at this stage of her pregnancy. The vouchers are SMS codes that can be redeemed at any participating shop in her community. Marietta has no bank account, no internet access, no health insurance, no ID card. She is out of reach of the modern health services. However, for this subscription, she doesn't need any of that. To be connected to this service, all she needs is a phone that can receive SMSs. She doesn't even need credit or airtime. Every consultation is a milestone that unlocks further benefits along the way. A professional delivery of the child is the culmination of this phase, but is soon followed by access to post-delivery kits and follow-up consultations. Throughout this journey, Marietta will also collect reward points, called TICO, for every milestone reached. She can redeem them at shops or clinics to pay for services or purchase food. She can even use them for some pampering at the local beauty salon. Na pale kwenye kadi wanaandika nambari ya mwanachama chama gani? Cha Illuminati. Huyu mtoto amekuwa registered underground. Na namba ya simu iko pale anaambiwa anaweza kupiga hiyo simu for any assistance free of charge. Namba iko hapa. We are now in the mark of the beast system Biometrics is God's microchip, fingerprinting, DNA, facial recognition, eye scans, all of it, God's microchips. You have been microchipped all along. Ever wondered why? Do you think God can be trusted? <laughs> there you have it. God's microchip has been there all along. The mark of the beast system on the process. Si ati ni kitu itakamilishwa na siku moja. It may take several years itambu watu wote wawe completed katika system hii ya mark of the beast. Ati mai microchip implant ni vitu vinaenda na faces slowly uh, a year after another wanazidi ku graduate kusonga mbele but after several years utakuta majority ya wanadamu duniani wako microchip wanatembea na microchip wanafanya kila kitu na microchip Microchips implanted in human bodies could transform the way we tackle many everyday tasks. Some workers in Sweden are already developing and volunteering, volunteering rather, to have chips injected into their hands. The technology can make some tasks easier and reduce the amount of personal items employees need to carry. John Blackstone looks at the controversial trend and how it could put your privacy at risk. In a Stockholm business complex, employees gain access not with key cards, but with a wave of a hand. This is something that you can use 
just like a key badge. And At a recent tech conference, Hannes Schoblad explained how a microchip implanted in his hand makes his life easier. It replaces all the keys and cards that used to clutter his pockets. I use this many times a day. For example, to unlock my smartphone, to open the door to my office. Schoblad calls himself a biohacker. We biohackers, we think that the human body is a good start, but there is certainly room for improvement. The first step in that improvement is getting a microchip about the size of a grain of rice slipped under the skin. Suddenly, the touch of a hand is enough to tell the office printer this is an authorized user. It felt pretty scary, but at the same time it felt very modern. The microchips are radio frequency identification tags, the same technology widely used in things like key cards. The chips have been implanted in animals for years to help identify lost pets. Now the technology is moving to humans. A tech startup called Dangerous Things has sold tens of thousands of implant kits for humans, some to tech companies in Europe. Showblood even organizes implant parties where people can bond over getting chipped together. I love gadgets and uh, now I kind of feel like I'm a gadget myself. Even a car door can be tweaked to open with a touch, but each touch leaves a digital footprint and that can compromise privacy. It also seems to be one thing if retailers can track me on my phone to see if they can get me to buy some socks or underwear. It's a different thing if my employer can see where I am, see what I'm doing when I'm off the job. This is serious stuff. We're talking about a nonstop potential connection to my body. I can't turn it off. I can't put it away. It's in me. That's a, that's a big problem. Even a dedicated biohacker has concerns. It's very easy to hack a chip implant. So my advice is don't put your life secrets on a chip implant. Somebody put an implant inside me. I found it this morning. Back in 2004, the Manchurian candidate suggested a future where humans are chipped and controlled. We have been warned. It's about educating the people and giving every person the tools, not only how to use the technology, but more importantly, when it's being used against you. But biohackers also predict the next generation of chips will save lives by monitoring health and fitness. For now, being chipped means never having to say you're sorry you forgot your key card. For CBS This Morning, John Blackstone, San Francisco. I'm fascinated by this. I've, I've always thought it was the future, that it would carry your medical records, mm -hmm. that it could track your fitness, that it could that you could buy your groceries with it. Right, like an Apple Pay or something. I'm I've, all in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm skeptical. I'm scared of becoming a cyborg. But if you guys go first, I'll join you. I mean, my goodness. Mark of the Beast, microchip, new world order, FEMA camp, starvation, viruses, earthquakes. What's going on politically? What's up with the Pope? what's going on around the world brothers and sisters the only way we can have any sense about what's going on is we got a bible and the bible is the only trusted book that i trust that explain to me what's going on we know we're the last generation and we're trying to hang on until the end things are getting darker more confusing and the world is lost the world is lost look man don't let them put a microchip in you. The microchip could be the mark of the beast. We are living in the last generation. Look, whether you think the chip is the mark or not, don't let them put a chip in you. What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome. Be wise. attention to the signs revelation 13 16 reads and the second beast required all people small and great rich and poor free and slave to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead that foreboding passage leads us to the small hamlet of geneva switzerland where the elite go about doing lucifer's busy work geneva switzerland home of the european headquarters of the united nations and cern geneva hosts the highest number of international organizations in the world 
including the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, the United Nations Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, the World Health Organization, the International Labor Organization, the International Telecommunication Union, the World Intellectual Property Organization, and apart from the United Nations agencies, Geneva also hosts many intergovernmental organizations such as the World Trade Organization, the World Economic Forum, the International Organization for Migration, and the International National Committee of the Red Cross. It is here in Geneva, Switzerland, where all of your personal data will be stored as you and your loved ones are chipped like animals, tracking your every movement, only to hit you with carbon taxation 24-7 under the incoming Agenda 2030 that is creeping its way into your community. Sound a little extreme? Well, Dr. Oz doesn't think so. This little chip may be the next big thing, and it sounds like it's right from a sci-fi movie, but people all over the world are implanting these into their wrists. We're so attracted to our devices that they're basically becoming a part of our bodies. But what if they really could become a part of our bodies? Well, guess what? They can. Meet the RFID microchip, similar to the tech used to track your pets or your phone. Once implanted in your body, it could identify you as you pass through the airport, open the door to your home. It could even be used to buy groceries at the supermarket. And just how is the United Nations going to go about chipping 325 million red-blooded Americans? Well, 10,000 people have already been chipped and the number is growing. The United Nations Mark of the Beast system will be coming to a school and or doctor's office near you, courtesy of the United Nations Agenda 2030. There's a growing trend towards cashing out. Hardly anyone carries cash with them these days. In the future, you may be getting rid of more than just your wallet. One day, you may not even need your phone to pay. New cashless technology on the horizon will let you make payments with just your fingerprint. Ndiyo mana munaona, pesa inatoroka haraka. Watu wanalia uchumi. Aa, usilia uchumi. Kuna transition inafanyika. Pesa inapotezwa, inakuja cashless system. Now, I've been having a conversation with guys about having credit cards. I'm a cashaholic. I'm a cashaholic. I'm a cashaholic. I need to see tangible money. It means I'm a Kenyan. I have my money. I spend it. I give me back change. I put it in the pocket. It's there with me. This idea of having a card and transacting and then it's money that is not yours. No. Why do I need a credit card? Lord, you know everything I've done, every thought I've had, you know everyone. And Lord, It'll really empower them in a big way. But the question is, can this really get out to almost everyone? I uh, talk about Bangladesh, and there only 4% have one of these mobile money accounts. But in the Philippines, they got started earlier. They have 8%. Other African countries are up to 10, 30, and even 40% of adults having these accounts. But the first country that got started was Kenya. Yes. But and the here. first country that got started was Kenya. And here we see that there's over a thousand accounts for every thousand adults. One is so empowering it is so empowering it will really change their life it is a debate that has sometimes seemed to have put government agencies against each other to adopt digital currency or not while the Central Bank of Kenya and the Capital Markets Authority have argued that it was an idea not ripe for the country, ICT Cabinet Secretary Joe Moshero has been receptive of the idea. All this while Kenyans soak in the new trend with establishments such as the Senyeri going ahead to express desire to be in tune with the global pace. It has embraced technology. We cannot evade it. It is here with us. 
let us embrace it or let's we will be left behind. God give me the courage of the man who died Giving their lives in the name of Christ All over my body Angels watching me I would rather die you walk around Delhi and you find signs for these digital payment platforms everywhere. Paytm, Samsung, MobiQuick, just to name a few. The number of digital transactions in India have quadrupled since November last year. Welcome news to a government on a mission to reduce India's reliance on cash. The 500 rupee and 1000 rupee currency notes presently in use will no longer be legal tender. Prime Minister Narendra Modi pulled nearly 90% of banknotes from circulation last year. Demonetization was supposed to crack down on corruption. The results there have been mixed, but one thing is clear. The historic shakeup's been a big boom to India's digital economy. Business at digital payments company Paytm jumped more than 400% in the hours after that cash crunch. Its mobile wallet app allowed users to shop at bakeries, electronic stores, even fruit stands without bills changing hands. Some bananas here. In just eight months, the company managed to sign up more than 220 million people using Paytm at 5 million shops. Just before demonetization, which was in November of 2016, we had 700,000 merchants. Post demonetization, we upped it, and then we started signing up to 40 to 50,000 merchants every day. 40 to 50,000 merchants every day. That surge in growth helped Paytm go beyond the digital payment space. It's expanded its e-commerce business. It's offering loans and banking. So we go in here and we send for amount. You can even buy gold through Paytm's digital gold service, which allows users to buy and sell the precious metal and store them digitally in a government certified vault. The company sold 50 kilograms of gold in its first month, making Paytm India's largest jeweler. Everyone in India saves using gold. If they save, they save using gold. So we want to offer digital gold as that product which is available to everyone, that everybody understands. Big name investors have already come calling. Alibaba and SoftBank invested more than $2 billion combined, making Paytm one of only a handful of Indian tech unicorns. But Paytm faces new competition from traditional banks who've developed their own digital payments platform. India also has a national ID system called Adar that registers people using biometrics. The government assigns an ID number attached to those biometrics and stores the information in a centralized database so people here don't have to carry a physical ID. So if you want to buy a SIM card, basically you take it here, the smartphone scans the barcode, put your thumbprint on this machine, and it's done. Adar isn't widely used by shops just yet, but the government's registered more than 1 billion people, or 95% of the population so far, making it the world's largest biometric ID system. So can this push to go digital actually lead to a cashless India? What do you think? Can India really go cashless? Well, cashless, there'll be less cash, right? It won't be zero cash. Almost no economy in the world is. In fact, a lot of the cash is already returned to the system, and the central bank in India is planning to issue new, lower-denominated bills. That doesn't mean the government's backing off of those cashless dreams. It's set out to process 25 billion digital transactions this year, part of a larger goal to transform India into a trillion-dollar digital economy by 2022. Groceries to bus fares to fuel. You don't get far without a handful of cash. Whether you have a lot of it or not very much of it, at some point in life, we all rely on this. But have you ever imagined a world without it? Using just these and this. Tanzanian tech expert Joan Zamrusha believes we should all move to digital payments. So he's invented the cashless challenge. I want to pay with a... Uh... Could you go without using any cash for a whole month? 
this way at least I'm assured I actually contributed uh, to the tax. Uh, but uh, in terms of uh, quick of payments, this is way easier. I don't have to sit around, wait for a change. He thinks making more of our payments electronic will be good for development. Consider a normal day for someone living in China. You wake up in the morning, go and buy breakfast on the street, and pay by scanning with your smartphone. In the subway station, you scan your smartphone to purchase your ticket. If, after getting off the train, you find there is not enough time to walk to the office, you scan the code for a shared bicycle, aka OFO bicycle, and ride to work in minutes. Time for lunch? You and your co-workers find a good restaurant nearby by using a smartphone-based app that allows for group purchases. After lunch, you go to the nearby supermarket to buy some bottled water, maybe a magazine from a kiosk too, all paid for with your smartphone. You can also go shopping online during your break. With a bit of luck, you will get it by the time you arrive home. Ili unabi ukamilike. Tuko pamoja. Na hizo ndizo siku ambazo Paulo anazungumza kwa Timotheo. Sasa sauti ya wakuu nchi inapozungumza mambo haya watu wanaona kama sauti hii inatoka kwa Mungu. Lakini hii ni sauti ya mashetani. Inaongea kwa vinyo vya wakuu wa dunia. Ni sauti za mapepo. Lakini kwa sababu wanadamu wamefundishwa kuheshimu wakuu wa ulimwengu huu, wanadhania ya kwamba wanaposema ni sawa na Mungu amesema. There is nothing like that. Hakuna kitu kama hiyo. Na kwa sababu hii wapendwa, hakuna wakati wa kuharibu. Sasa ni kuhubiri mbio na speed tangu tumeanza rodisho tumekuwa tukisupply vijikaratasi ama andi bills ama handouts mbazo hebu patia kila mtu kamoja ndiyo nikianza kuongelea hiyo kila mtu hawa anaweza kuangalia ile yake <coughs> sisi sote mali hapa kama wahubiri tunahitaji kufanya jambo kwa sababu ya hizi karatasi na ninamaanisha ya kwamba uende uchapishe zako yule anayenichapishia hizi yuko hapa Nairobi tuko pamoja na ananifanyia bei nafuu ana ukisikiza hiyo karatasi ni ngumu ni karatasi gali sana. Yaani full color. Sawa sawa. Na ile ya chini kabisa anayofanya ni elfu sita na tano kwa hizi elfu tano 5000 pieces. 5000 pieces unaweza kuhubiri nazo kwako. Sisi sana. Anafanya kwa 6500 full color. Ah, si lazima utumie picha yangu, unaweza tumia picha yako hata wewe mwenyewe na jina lako. Na unaweza ondoa tu picha yangu ikaondolewa na jina langu kaweka picha yako na jina lako. Then the other thing remains. Si kweli? Na ukaweka namba yako ya simu ukaondoa zikaondolewa zangu na kama uko na email ukaweka pale ukaondoa ile yangu then you find yourself you need to do this we have no time na ninasema hii kwa sababu inchi ni kubwa na tunaweza kukosa kuweza kufikia kila mahali lakini kule wewe upo kwa nini tuje na wewe uko huko. Hawi together. Kwa nini tuje na wewe uko huko? Do something like that. Do something like this. 
kufanya kitu kama hii na wewe uende strategize utengeneze team ya kutu unaweza kuchagua hata ni siku ngapi kwa wiki natoka mnaingia mitaani na mnaanza kuhamasisha wanadamu juu ya the mark of the beast yani mambo ya chapa ya yule mnyama ambayo ni sita sitini na sita haleluya ambayo biblia inasema ya kwamba hatutaweza kuuza wala kununua pasipo chapa ya huyo mnyama uzuri nimekuwekea vifungu vya biblia msomaji mmoja achukue biblia na uanze hapo kwa Danieli saba kwa huyo mnyama wa kwanza ambaye ameandikwa hapo Danieli saba mstari wa nne nataka tuchambue hiyo karatasi ili ujue vile unaweza eleza mtu tuko pamoja ili na wewe ukifika kanisani na wewe uweze kueleza ili wale watakaoshika sasa mufanye kazi eh mufanye kazi kwa hii magari ya Nairobi na kwenu kila mitaani lazima tujitoe hiyo ndio kitu ningependa tuongee lazima tufanye nini ya yeah, toa pesa injili ihubiriwe azina zetu waziko hapa azina zetu ziko mbinguni pesa ulionayo itupie mwingine asikie injili tuko pamoja na nitaweza kuunganisha na yule anaye nichafikia hizi e, popote wewe ulipo mnaweza wasiliana ukimwambia nimepewa namba na mtumishi makenzi ataelewa na akielewa mtawasili na umwambie unataka kiasi gani akutengenezee mtumie pesa mwambie uko upi atakutumia vitu vyako ni ndugu ambaye ni mcha Mungu ameokoka kwa hivyo awezi kufanya ujanja mimi umtumia tu nikiwa malindi na akachapisha na akanitumia zikafika tuko pamoja mimi natengenezaga mingi nikitengeneza mara moja natengeneza 20000 pieces haleluya eh tusomee danieli saba mstari wa 4 nitasoma danieli saba mstari wa 4 wa kwanza alikuwa kama simba naye alikuwa na mabawa ya tai nikatazama hata mabawa yake yakafutuka manyoya akainuliwa katika enchi akasimamishwa juu kwa miguu miwili kama mwanadamu naye akapewa moyo wa kibinadamu mnyama wa kwanza alikuwa kama si simba alionekana na Danieli wakati biblia inazungumzia kuhusu shika hii maelezo ninayokueleza ndio utaweza kueleza mwingine ndio utaweza kwenda na wewe ufafanulie kanisa tuko pamoja nalo lipate kuelewa mnyama wa kwanza alikuwa kama simba na wakati maono yale ya Danieli na ufunuo wa Yohana yanapotaja mnyama huwa sio mnyama yule tunayejua wa msituni au kufuga ile ni spirit ndio inayofananishwa na mnya na mnyama ile ni roho ya kipepo roho ya kishetani inafananishwa na mnyama sasa ile spirit aliyoiona Danieli ya kwanza ilikuwa ina umbo fano wake ilikuwa ni wasimba tuko pamoja lakini hatimaye akamuona yule mnyama amesimamishwa kwa miguu mingapi ana wa mwanadamu imeeleweka 
hiyo inamaanisha nini? Inamaanisha ya kwamba kumbe yule si mnyama bali ile roho itaingia mwanadamu. Na ikiingia mwanadamu hapo ndipo itakapo jitokeza. Ndipo itakapo fanya kazi. Na mnyama yule wa kwanza ambaye mfano wake ni simba ilikuwa wakati huo ni utawala wa Babiloni utawala wa Nebukadneza ndio ulipewa ule mfano wa simba tuko pamoja kwa hivyo utawala huo ulitawala dunia wakati wake huo na kisha ukaanguka hatimaye Danieli akaona mnyama mwingine ameinu kwamba utawala wa Babeli, utawala wa Nebukadneza ulikuwa utaanguka lakini baada ya kuanguka huo kuna utawala mwingine utainuka. Pia nao utatawala dunia. Nayo akaoneshwa katika Danieli saba, msalo wa tano tusome. Saba, mstari wa tano Natazama mnyama mwingine wa pili kama dubu naye aliinuliwa upande mmoja na mifupa mitatu ya mbavu ilikuwamo kinywani mwake katika meno yake wakamwambia mnyama huyo hivi inuka ule nyama tele sasa mnyama wa pili baada ya mnyama wa kwanza ambaye ni mfano wa simba tunapata mfano wa dubu utawala wa babiloni katika mnyama wa kwanza ilikuwa ni wakati wana wa Israeli walikuwa wametekwa nyara na kuchukuliwa mateka kutoka inchi ya yuda na kupelekwa katika inchi ya uhamisho ambayo ni inchi ya babeli wakati huo ndio wale vijana ni watatu ama ni waine Danieli, Meshak na Abednego watatu ndipo tunasikia habari zao walipokuwa katika serikali ya Nebukadneza ni nini kilichoendelea basi utawala huo ndio ulikuwa top in the world katika uso wa dunia ulikuwa top sasa baadaye kwa Kiingereza wanasema kuna utawala unaitwa Medo Persian. Sijui kwa Kiswahili tutahitaji. Medo Persian, utawala wa pili. Mfano wake ni dubu. Utawala huu wa pili nao ukainuka baada ya utawala wa Nebukadneza. Ukatawala dunia na ukatawala muda wake pia ukaisha ukaja ukaanguka Danieli akaoneshwa tena utawala wa tatu utakuja kuinuka nao ukapewa mfano wa umbo la mnyama vile vile ambayo ni Danieli saba na mstari wa sita tusomee mstari wa sita kisha nikatazama na kumbe mnyama mwingine kama chui naye juu ya mgongo wake alikuwa na, na mabawa maine kama ya ndege mnyama huyo alikuwa na vichwa vinne akapewa mamlaka huyu mnyama alikuwa na vichwa vinne kumaanisha huu utawala uligawanyikana sehemu ine ulikuwa ni mfano wa chui ile roho iliyotawala katika ufalme huu ilikuwa mfano wake ni nini ni chui hawa wanyama kama tunavyowaona ni mifumo ya utawala ambayo ilitokea duniani kabla hatujazaliwa na hatimaye mingine inaendelea hata sasa wakati tumezaliwa sisi na huo utawala ulikuwa ni utawala wa Kigiriki. Utawala wa Kigiriki ndio ulioleta uliokuja na education. 
We will be talking to you today about the history of public education and how it has evolved into what it is today. This presentation is by Nicholas Bradfield, Caitlin Brockhouse, Josie Fairbanks, Bailey Ronning, and Andrew Bruins. In the 1600s, all schools began as religious organizations. These schools focused primarily on Greek and Latin languages, primarily on Greek and Latin languages, primarily on Greek and Latin languages. Its development was from Puritan and Congregationalist religion, religious roots. In 1647, it was said that every town of 50 families should have an elementary school and every 100 families should have a Latin school. A diversity of people from various countries and different faiths led to the eventual weakening of the religious school system. Soon people were refusing to learn solely in English. They opposed how the clergy was forcing their religious views into public education. In the 1700s, Thomas Jefferson proposed the two-track educational system for the laboring and the learned. This would allow very few of the laboring class to advance by raking a few geniuses from the rubbish. In 1790, the Pennsylvania State Constitution calls for free public education for poor children. Also concerned about the education of poor children, the New York Public School Society in 1805 set up schools that had a schoolmaster to teach the older children so that they may teach those who were younger. In the 1830s, most southern states had laws forbidding teaching people in slavery to read. Only 5% of these students were able to become literate, and this success came with great risk. By the middle of the 19th century, private schools became the norm. Until 1840, receiving an education was only for the wealthy. The reason is because many wealthy students received schooling at private schools. Since private schools were not federally funded, parents had to uphold their part and pay a certain amount to enroll their children in, into a private school. In the 19th century, the classroom expressed the looks of a largely rural agricultural economy. Rural communities had few resources to expend on education, and there was a lack of commercially available products for schools. Often the school would be open only for a few months of the year. These times were set so education did not disrupt the children's work at home or on the farm. Teaching and learning consisted mainly of literacy, penmanship, arithmetic, and good manners. Recitation, drilling, and quizzes at the end of the day were the ways of testing these students' achievements. Utawala wa kigiriki. Ndiyo ulio zindua kitu kinaitu education. Na wakati Greek ama Greece ilipo anguka. Utawala wake ulipo anguka. Wakauza sera za elimu kwa murumi. Kwa Roman Kingdom. Roman Empire. As I've been writing this, I wrote a chapter on discipling nations, and when I got to the chapter on teaching nations, I was stumped. I mean, the thought of somehow developing a model from Scripture to teach a whole nation, I thought, how do I do that? So I put two words in the computer, teaching nations, I just sat there and stared at them, and then I was so overwhelmed. I went and laid on my face and I said, God, how do you teach a whole nation? And he spoke to me and he said, there's someone that has already taught your whole nation and the nations of the earth. Go look up the Humanist Manifesto. So I looked at the first point of the Humanist Manifesto. It says, religious, this was written in 1933, it said religious human, humanists believe that the universe is self-existing and not created. Now, who was a framer of this? A man named John Dewey, the father of American education. And I began to study this, and I began to see that there was something desperately wrong 
because since 1933, the educational systems of the world have been totally diluted, deceived, co-opted, and taken over by, by this ungodly system. Satan came in, and he began to interject things that would cause his rulership to come into the earth. And one of the things that he did in the garden was he founded humanism. And if you look at the scripture, you'll see in Genesis 3, in verse 5, this is what the serpent said to the woman. For God knows in that day you will eat of it. Your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good from evil. You will be like God. What is humanism? Humanism says man is God. There's no creator. And we know what's good and we know what's evil. When they go off to school, they're going to be influenced by others. Here's what I want you to think about as a parent. Very, very seriously to think about this. When you send that child off to school today, you're sending them into a pagan society. Because with few exceptions, the school system is not going to teach them to believe God, not going to teach them to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ or to honor Him, but they're going to, by the way they teach and the things they teach, little by little, do what? Attack your faith. Attack their faith, even the small children in those lower grades. Teaching them ethics that are unethical according to Scripture. Teaching them to be willing to participate in immoral, ungodly, sensual practices that are acceptable to the world, but condemned by Almighty God. And that very deceitfully and cunningly does what? Seeks to undermine the faith of your child very early in life. Will they deny that? Absolutely. Do they say that's not my purpose? Absolutely. But it's not what they say, it's what they do. When you criticize the Word of God, criticize the Lord Jesus Christ, just degrade Christian faith altogether and teach those practices that the Bible states very clearly are ungodly, unacceptable, and condemned by God, that's what you're sending your child into. And you cannot deny that if you're realistic. So here's the question. How are you preparing them to face life? Na uo ndi utawala wa nne na wa mwisho. Tuko pamoja. Uo ndi utawala wa ine na wa mwisho. Tawala uo wa ine na wa mwisho ndi utawala muhimu sana. Sisi kuzungumzia hapa. Mana zile zengini tatu zilianguka na atuku wa tumezaliwa na mambo yake ya kai. Lakini kuna utawala moja huu wa inne ndiyo muhimu sana sisi kuangazia maana tupo katika huo utawala hata sasa. Huu utawala Yesu alizaliwa akaukuta. Tuko pamoja mababu zetu wakazaliwa wakaukuta. Yesu akaondoka akauacha babu zetu na babu zetu pia waka, wakaondoka wakauacha na bado huu utawala umefika mahali umefika huo utawala ndio ulizindua njia ya kutawala dunia kupitia kwa umoja wa mataifa ndio walizindua united nations tuko pamoja utawala huo ndio utawala wa nne ambayo ni Danieli saba mstari wa saba tusome Saba baadaye nikaona katika njozi ya usiku na tazama mnyama wa nne mwenye kutisha mwenye nguvu huyu mnyama kwanza alikuwa anatisha tuko pamoja na alionekana ni mwenye nguvu Ehe. mwenye uwezo mwingi naye alikuwa na meno ya chuma makubwa sana alikula na kuvunja vipande vipande mwenye uwezo mwingi naye alikuwa na meno ya chuma yenye kuvunja 
uvunja vunja eh na kuyakanyaga mabaki kwa miguu yake na kukanyaga mabaki kwa miguu yake eh na umbo lake lilikuwa mbali kabisa na wale wa kwanza umbo lake lilikuwa tofauti kabisa na wale wa kwanza watatu tuko pamoja eh naye alikuwa na pembe kumi alikuwa na pembe kumi tuko pamoja na anasemekana pia alikuwa na vichwa pembe kumi na vichwa vingapi pembe kumi na vichwa saba tuko pamoja tuko hapo hao wanyama hizo tawala zengine tatu za mbele unaweza kubrush ukipita manake they are not very important today kwa sababu ziliangu na zikaisha but the fourth kingdom hiyo ndiyo inaitwa utawala wa Kirumi utawala wa Kirumi nimetangulia kukwambia Yesu aliukuta na Yesu akauacha utawala huu ndio uliua mitume ndio uliua wanafunzi ndio ulitesa kanisa la Yesu tuko pamoja utawala wa murumi utawala huu wa murumi baada ya Yesu kuondoka mfalme aliyekuwa anatawala wa mwisho aliinuka kupigana na Ufaransa na mfalme wa Ufaransa miaka hiyo ya nyuma akashindwa aliposhindwa aka fanya makubaliano akaamua kusaini treaty akaamua kusaini treaty na mfalme wa Kifaransa tuko pamoja na walipoamua kusaini treaty akamuomba mfalme wa Ufaransa ya kwamba mimi nime step down sitakuwa tena mfalme lakini nataka tukubaliane uniachie Vatican uniachie 100 meters square not 100 meters 100 miles tuko pamoja square nifanye makao ya dini sasa mimi nitakuwa msimamizi wa dini hapo ndipo roman catholic inazaliwa tuko pamoja wakati huu kina petro wako hai roman catholic sasa inazaliwa hapo kupitia kwa kina constantine na akafanyika popu wa kwanza aliyetawala roman catholic kwa hivyo akaachwa tuko pamoja wakaachiwa vatican wafanye makao makuu yao ya dini na waendeleze mambo yao ya kidini sasa ule ufalme ukachukua picha tofauti na fiche sana na tunaposoma i think danieli ah, not danieli tunaposoma ufuno wa yohana twende pale kwa ufuno wa yohana na neno tuangalie pale kwanza mstari wa 8 eh? nitasoma ah, haya tusikize ufuno wa Yohana 17 kuanzia nane. yule mnyama uliyemuona alikuwa wako naye sasa ha- Yohana katika kisua cha Patimo sasa anaoneshwa mnyama ambaye si mpya alikuwa pamoja 
yule mnyama ulie muona alikuwa na kabla hebu ili tuwaunganishie vizuri rudi 13 ili turudi tukuunganishie na 17 ili uelewe nani Yohana naye anazungumzia nini rudi hapo 13 soma ah kuanzia tu moja ufunuo 13 kuanzia moja kisha nikaona mnyama akitoka katika bahari mwenye pembe kumi na vichwa saba kisha nikaona mnyama huyu ni ni, ni, ni Yohana yuko katika maono katika kisiwa cha Patimo angalia anaoneshwa exactly kile Danieli alioneshwa kisha nikaona mnyama akitoka katika bahari Bahari nimewafunza sana inasimamia dunia tuko pamoja ama mahali ambapo kuna wingi wa watu a densely populated area tuko pamoja kwa hivyo inaposema bahari inasema dunia na in other words bahari pia inaweza kutranslate kuzimu tuko pamoja kuzimu kwa hivyo huyu mnyama akatoka katika bahari mwenye pembe kumi na vichwa vingapi pembe hizi kumi ni nguvu za utawala wake vile ameshika dunia kumaanisha ya kwamba hii dunia itakamatwa katika sehemu kumi ndio itaweza kutawaliwa dunia mzima vizuri na inaposema pembe kumi inasema wafalme hiyo ni wafalme kumi Here's a quick summary of what we have learned so far from the Daniel 7 prophecy. The four great beasts are four successive empires: Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. The ten horns represent the divided Roman Empire that was taken over by barbaric tribes. The little horn comes up among the ten horns and plucks out three horns. If you want to learn more about the four beasts, click on the link at the end of this video. Now let's focus on six Bible points that help identify who the little horn of Daniel 7 really is. Point 1. What is the little horn? In Bible prophecy, horns represent kings, kingdoms, or political powers. Therefore, this little horn is a kingdom. Daniel 7:24 reads, "The 10 horns are 10 kings who shall arise from this kingdom, and another shall rise after them. He shall be different from the first ones and shall subdue three kings." Point 2. When does the little horn appear? Daniel 7:8 reads, I was considering the horns and there was another horn a little one coming up among them before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots this bible passage tells us that this little horn came up after the 10 horns and then appeared three of the horns we know from history that the kingdoms of the heruli ostrogoths and vandals were destroyed by the papal state because they did not accept certain papal mandates this gives us a definite time frame for the rise of the little horn power the little horn arises after the division of the Roman Empire but before the destruction of the three kingdoms the western roman empire was divided into 10 nations after 476 ad three of those nations the heruli ostrogoths and vandals were destroyed by the year 538 ad in 538 ad vigilus the bishop of rome ascended the papal throne under the protection of the roman general belisarius thus 538 ad is the date for the establishment of papal rome as an independent power to qualify as a horn this power must have the attributes of a kingdom which indeed applies to the vatican which to this day is an independent state the american catholic quarterly review says this long ages ago when rome through the neglect of the western emperors was left to the mercy of the barbarous hordes the romans turned to one figure for aid and protection and asked him to rule them and thus commenced the temporal 
royal sovereignty of the popes. So, meekly stepping to the throne of Caesar, the vicar of Christ took up the scepter to which the emperors and kings of Europe were to bow in reverence through so many ages. Point 3. How is the little horn different from the ten horns? Daniel 7.24 reads, The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom, and another shall rise after them. He shall Tuna haja ya kuogopa kitu Ujumbe hatu siyo hakuwa